Uh, we've had 11 practices. Um, I think we've gotten a little better each day. Battled through some um, uh, injuries and guys being out for this reason and uh, that reason. But, you know, I like coaching these guys. We have obvious lim limitations, but, you know, that's uh, neither here nor there with me. Um, um, these guys play hard. They try hard. They're picking up a new system. Uh, the coaching staff is learning new players. So for us, there are no returning players or new players. Everybody's the same. First year at U of H. Um, you know, I think everything still starts with your culture. That's a often used, very misunderstood word, by the way. You know, your, your, your culture has everything to do with um, um, how you go about your day to day activities, whether it's going to class, being on time for workouts, um, encouraging a teammate. Getting on the floor after a loose ball, setting a good screen, uh, sp sprinting back versus jogging back, talking, communicating. You know, culture has uh, you know, it's your identity. So uh, that's really been my biggest focus. You know, we haven't gotten into a lot of uh, stuff that we need to get in as we go on, but uh, I'm not going to, I'm not interested in uh, what happens after. Uh, D, E, and F until we get uh, A, B, and C. And A, B, and C is very much our culture and how we go about doing things on a daily basis. We have some big, big, big programs, including the Big Ten. How do you kind of give these guys a, not a mid-major mentality, even though they're at the mid-major level? I never, never thought about that. Um, I didn't know we were a mid-major. Are we a mid-major? Uh, let me check now. The team from our conference won the national championship, and we're in their conference. So how can we be a mid-major? I'm just asking. Coach, you mentioned some of the, the absences, absences in practice and some of the injuries. How has that affected the team during those 11 No, it hasn't affected us at all. Um, you know, we're. Um, Kind of a next man up mentality. You know, LJ Rose has been out with a broke foot, broken foot. Uh, Mikhail McLean has a broken foot. Um, you know, I've never coached those guys before. So everything's new. So missing a guy means nothing to me. You know, I'm, I've never coached Chuck Baker before or Gerard Stiggers uh, and, and vice versa. Um, so for us, um, I don't know what you can miss unless you've had it. So, you know, uh, Chuck Baker's been running uh, point guard. We have a walk-on named Wes Van Beck. If we had a game tonight, our walk-on would play a lot of minutes. That's, that's what we have. What are some things that you'll do the same as when you were a college coach before? What are some things you'll do? Good question. Good question. Um, I think for uh, us, you know, again, not to, not to, um, 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 just beat the drum so much on culture, but culture will not change. You know, we, you know, we, we have a, a clear understanding of how we want our team to play. You know, there's no debate on that. There's no, negoti no, no uh, negotiations or discussions about how we want our team to play. But the, the thing that um, uh, I think the NBA has done for me is uh, opened my eyes up to importance of pace and space. Pace is your tempo. How quickly do you want to play? Uh, a lot of teams talk about playing fast, but the first time you, you, you know you run up down the court a few times, guys miss shot, coaches stand up, they want to slow them down. Well, we're committed to playing fast. That's who we are. We, we're, our team presently is not set up to play in the half court. We, we don't have those kinds of players. Um, um, we're very athletic. I think that's the strength of ours. Um, but the pace that we want to play at, uh, the shots we want to take is something that we, we're going to live with. We're going to shoot a lot of threes. Uh, we're going to uh, play as quickly as we can. We have uh, some set rules. For instance, the ball has to, be, has to be across half court in three seconds or less, make or miss. You know, we, we want to get the ball up to court quickly. Um, now, shot selection is a, um, something that has to be 
uh, taught. You know, uh, their idea of a good shot may not be exactly my idea of a good shot as part of the uh, no negotiation um, phase. But J. Ross Diggers can make threes. Laron Barnes can make threes. Uh, Chicken Knowles uh, can make threes. Uh, some days he's Chicken, some days he's Dan Rad. Um, let's go with Dan Rad today. Dan Rad Knowles can make threes. Um, Chuck Baker can make a three. Eric Weary, Torian Graham. That's, I, I think that's something that our team's going to have to uh, depend on. You know, uh, the nights those balls don't go in, um, then there, again, there comes our culture. What's important? Uh, offensive rebounding. You know, we've got to be a team that gets as close to 50% of our missed shots as possible. Um, a lot of nights you're not going to beat teams with your first shot. You're going to have to depend on your second shot or your third shot. So all those things are emphasized. All those things is, is part of our daily practices. Yeah. What kind of players were you looking for? And, and Anybody that had a pulse. If they had a pulse, I was looking for them. When you start recruiting the second week in April, uh, Joseph, um, you, you, you don't get down to, okay, what are we looking for? Well, what's available? You know, at first, that's the first thing we had to look at, what's available? You know, there was a lot of guys out there that, um, you know, uh, for instance, a guy like Devontae Pollard. You know, we, we did a lot of background work on Devontae. We had to find out what kind of person he was. Did he fit the culture that we wanted to um, establish here at the University of Houston? And um, he did. Um, but, you know, a lot of the other kids, is, um, you know, we decided to go with mostly junior college kids because, quite frankly, the high school kids that are available in April aren't the kind of kids you're probably going to build your program with over a four or five year period. Um, and then, and then there's certain, um, there's certain uh, mitigating factors that come into play. For instance, APR. You know, if you start recruiting high school kids that are available in April, um, chances are you may recruit over those kids in a the year. They transfer, and then all of a sudden now you're stuck with a low APR. So we had to think a lot of things through in constructing a roster. The other thing that we were up against was the transfers. You know, we had five, I think five, might have been six. It uh, seemed like every kid that I met came in the office and, and, and uh, informed me that they had already requested a release. So after a couple of days of I'm transferring, I started counting up heads and I said, well, how many do we have? <laughs> I figured we had five. So you got five guys on a 13-man uh, scholarship limit. Math wasn't good, but I said, well, if we're going to fill our scholarships, we've got to go sign eight guys. Um, so that's where we started, and that's what it was. You know, we didn't, we didn't uh, worry about it, didn't, that's just the way it goes. You know, sometimes you, in, when you take over a program, you, you inherit um, um, a lot. Sometimes you don't inherit so much, but what it is, is it's like that saying in Hoosiers, we have our team, you know, and I'm proud of our guys. I like our guys. I like coaching this team. So uh, is it a perfect roster? Obviously not. This time next year, our roster will be better. Two years from now, it'll be even better. So we're we're building this program. I'm, I, this year is what it is. You know, we're establishing culture and and getting guys to play the way we want them to play. Um, and I think when people see our style of play, they're going to be excited to come watch us play. It's going to be a fun team to watch. Um, I'm I'm excited about them. No, I think we, we um, um, want to focus on high school kids, especially in this area. Um, that's going to be our first priority. You know, obviously I, I didn't know anything about any high school kids until uh, April the 4th or 5th. I never heard of, um, I didn't even know the kids on the team, obviously, so I didn't know who, I didn't know of any high school kids. I didn't even know who the top high school players in the country were, much less who the high school players in the city of Houston were, but since, we, since we've taken over, our, our staff has done a great job. 
um, all of them done a great job of getting out and and um, meeting high school coaches. We just had a we just had a clinic, a high school coaches clinic um, or coaches clinic Saturday, uh, where we had close to, close to a 100 high school coaches attend our clinic. So, uh, you know, we're we're laying down some uh, roots, um, establishing relationships, um, but you know. If you're a basketball coach at the University of Houston, I think you have to make a concerted effort to recruit the city of Houston. But there just, there's a difference in recruiting the best players and the right players. You know, I, I want the, the best players that fit us. So that's, that's something that we, we pay close attention to. First day of your workouts, your, your son tweeted uh, what it was like to be out there uh, with you and to be on the court. How is that man? Do you hold him to a different well, well, obviously I'm closer to him than um, um, anybody else. But you know, we have a good, really good coaching staff. Al Alvin Brooks is outstanding. Uh, Talvin Hester is going to be a really good young coach. Um, our, our video guy, um, uh, Casey Beard, uh, Hollis Price, who obviously is. Very close with uh, up and down the, the line. Um, Steve Yoder's invaluable with his um, his uh, wisdom, <laughs> but uh, no, it, it's it's been good with um, uh, Kellen. After a while, you, you know, you see him every day. Um, you know, the father son the father son thing will always be there. But uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for him as a uh, coach and. And, and his ability to uh, grow in this profession. But sure, it's, it's, it's always special to work with your son. Coach, what non-conference games stand out to you and how will that carry you as you get into conference play? Every one of them. Not, not one more so than others. You know, we, we had agreements to play Georgetown this year. Uh, that fell through. We had an agreement to play LSU this year. That fell through. Uh, we, had an, we had a uh, contract uh, allegedly to play in a tournament in Los Angeles uh, to open the season. That fell through. So between all those transfers and the schools backing out of, of uh, scheduling, we um, obviously are pretty busy um, April, May, June, and July. I mean, it seems like every day we're trying to figure out who's here and who's not and who we're playing and who, who backed out yesterday or today. But uh, we replaced those teams. We're going to go, we're playing Murray State who will obviously be a uh, NCAA tournament team. Uh, I think that's our first game. Uh, what date is that anyway? What's our first game? 14th. Um, um, I looked at their roster and everybody said, why are you playing them? Why not? What's the worst thing can happen? We lose? It's OK. Um, might win, too. You never know. That's why they keep score. Um, after that, I don't even know who we play. Who we play after that? God, I was about to say, if we played more Murray State and Harvard, I must have blacked out or something. Who do, who do we play? Wow. Morgan State? Yeah. Harvard, Harvard that's, that's uh, they'll be a top 25 team. They beat a, uh, um, have we established the fact we're not in a mid-major conference yet? I mean, we got that straight, right? Cincinnati's in our conference, Memphis, SMU, yeah. Well, uh, Harvard, uh, what are they, by the way? Are they mid-major? I'm just asking what. Yeah. Well, Harvard beat Cincinnati last year in the NCAA tournament. They're pretty good. So, um, I, you know, I haven't even looked at the top 25. Is Har Harvard in the top 25? Are they? They're not? Yeah. I mean, I, th I think they're pretty good. Harvard's good. Uh, Murray State's good. Um, you know, for us right now, they all look good to me. So it doesn't matter. Um, but. Um, you know, we're, you know, when we started, when we did the schedule this year, we weren't exactly thinking about uh, the NCAA tournament chances. I was just trying to figure out the roster. <laughs> but we're on a good foot now, so don't worry about it. So with, with, with the, different, the mix of the incoming and the guys that you have back, how important, obviously, is it that you have guys like Dan Rad and Gerard and Mikhail, that, that, that leadership from guys that have been here? Yeah, you know, even though Mikhail McLean's out with the broke foot, um, I like him. He's he's um, 
You know, leadership is a, um, another overused, misunderstood word. You know, le leadership to me is, is, is consistency uh, every day. It's this, you have to be, if you're going to be this way today, then you have to be every day. Um, uh, Mikkel's, Mikkel's a really solid leader. Uh, it's a good role model, too. It's a kid that graduated, got his degree in um, last May, got accepted into graduate school, was working on his master's degree. I, I, I really like him. He's, he's really good for our guys, too. Uh, but J. Rod Stiggers, uh, Dan Rad Knowles, um, LJ, even though I've, I've never uh, really worked with LJ much, uh, you can tell he's a great kid, too. We have great kids. I, that's the thing that I, I, I really like about this team. I have no idea how good we are, obviously, but uh, I, I like this team. I like coaching them. Um, but uh, Dan Rad, Gerard, uh, Leron, that's about it, right? Who else? That's it. That's the only three guys from last year that, that uh, but, you know, uh, uh, their experience in what we're doing comes from having played last year in another system. They have no experience playing in this system, so they're all new to me. Yeah, that's another good question. Um, the fact that I've been an assistant coach. You know, I, I was a head coach in college when I was 25 years old. So I've n never really been an assistant coach. I didn't know how to, to, to um, um, uh, balance that. Um, but, you know, working with Greg Popovich in San Antonio, uh, Scott Skiles in Milwaukee, and Kevin McHale, over here in Houston, um, I think it's helped make me a make me a better head coach, especially in terms of dealing with the assistant coaches, uh, giving them more freedom, um, allowing them to be in charge of something. Um, uh, like today, I'm not going to say who, but I, I've got one of my assistants is doing all this on offense. Another one's in charge of this area, that area. You know, uh, doing a better job of delegating. Um, I think I think that that's really helped me. And, I, and the, other, the other people that I've worked with, like one of the guys I worked with in Milwaukee was Lionel Hollins, who's the head coach for the Brooklyn Nets now and was the head coach for Memphis. You know, you, you, you learn a lot from uh, just about everybody. You know, I, I learn a lot from uh, my assistant coaches. You know, just we meet every day around 10 o'clock and we, sometimes we meet for two hours. And, and, I, and I like to find out what, what, what have you guys done in the past that you've seen that you liked in, in, in this area maybe? Um, so I, I, I enjoy learning from them too. They, they teach me a lot. Say it again. Um, yeah, I think, I think we're getting better. Um, you know, under NCAA rules, I can't, I can't talk about scrimmage, right? Right, okay. Under NCAA rules, you can play exhibition games or scrimmages, so we're, we're, uh, I'm looking forward to, to getting those under our belt. You know, at some point, you, you know, you need to play against somebody else. I think we've had 12 practices. You know, um, coaching and putting stuff in is like having a toolbox. You know, you pick up your toolbox, what do you got in it? You know? Um, when, you know, I have a lot of things in, in my personal toolbox, but as far as this team, there was nothing in when we started. So, you, you know, you, you start with uh, uh, things that's important to you. You know, I like man-to-man -man defense, always have, but I'm not averse to playing zone. But e everything that we're going to do on the court, uh, we've had to put in and teach, whether it's man-to-man -man defense, man-to-man -man offense, uh, secondary break, um, rebounding missed free throws. Uh, press offense, uh, press defense, baseline out of bounds plays, sideline out of bounds plays. So it's, it's hard sometimes to judge your progress because you're constantly teaching something. Uh, when, we, when we play against um, each other in scrimmages, we, we're starting, we're to the point now where we can bring in local referees to come in and um, uh, start officiating our scrimmages because 
because there's so many emphasis and, and new rules that the referees uh, have been hammered on all uh, spring, summer, and fall. And you know they're going to call certain things a certain way. So I want our guys to get used to that. But um, I, I do know that we're a lot better today than we were before. Um, but you know, the point guard position is very fluid. Um, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we 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 really define what a big man is. You know, uh, I've gone from Dwight Howard to Chicken Knowles. I'm not sure about that one. But you know, uh, I love Dan Rad. He's my guy. All right, guys, that it. All right. <laughs>